Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Manila Major American Qualifiers. We are here with our first round of the playoffs. It is, of course, Dragneel versus Digital Chaos, our second game. We are getting underway. My name is Mott. With me is Fogged, of course, and we are going to jump into the draft real quick as, well, that first game, uh, I wish I could say it was close, Fogged, but I'm pretty sure it was the opposite. Yeah, it was almost as defeating as seeing you get into the ring after 10 minutes and get plowed out instantly. You know, I'm happy. Get I got I got my entrance. I will not get in the ring, all right? Not for you, Yanis. Not for Twitch chat. Not for anybody. I got in the ring, and guess what happened? My life flashed before my eyes. Meth addict Draskal is too much of an opponent. It's actually ridiculous to deal with. Drug addict Draskal. Hey, sorry, drug addict, drug addict Draskal. Anyway. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Looking straight into the draft, though. Bit of a change up now. We don't see the Beastmaster band, and we don't see the Darkseer band. So... The DC obviously heavily favoring the Fury on, on any for either squad. They banned it out as a first ban, so they're not. They don't seem to favor the Doom as highly as everybody else. Yeah, that's 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 true. They'll probably they'll probably pick it up here in the first two either way. Yes. But they don't t they don't take it as a first. They don't consider it a first pick here. The one thing I wanted to to talk about, and this is what I pointed out last game, was the the slaughter ban. Right? Because yeah. we talked about Resolution. I mean, obviously he was a driving force in that game. And maybe that one yeah. gank bottom could have changed everything for Dragneel. Maybe it could have. But it's not available now. Do you think that is the right choice for them? You said pick your poison when I talked about it. Do you, I mean, is there any right ban for them at this point for Dragon Slayers for Dragneel? Uh, I think it depends on what approach they want to go for for the game. Like, they can't be really thinking that way going into the game. You're just going into, like, with a bad mentality, right? Yeah. You kind of just have to think, you know, we're going to play our best. It doesn't... We're going to play Let's our game of Dota. Play our game of Dota. Sh okay, the Slardar was definitely a big nuisance, so we're going to get rid of that one, and then now we can come back to play what we're used to playing because I think I think most of these teams coming into this uh, Manila qualifier weren't really seeing Slardar safely in, out of all these other teams, especially yeah. not in the American scene. Yeah. Yeah, th this is something that uh, it was very surprising to see Resolution do so well. I, 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 shouldn't, I shouldn't say that considering of how good of a player he is, but, man, they did pretty damn well for themselves. Look at the Enchantress for Dragon, as we talked about, in the Marana first pick. Y you seemed interested by this pick. What do you what do you think they about did, the Marana they first did pick? Go for the bounty, okay. Uh, I like the Marana first pick in some games, but you know, actually, no. This this is one of the instances I've seen a few teams actually do this. When there's the Enchantress, they pick the Marana into it because not only can you obviously kill the creep with easily, yes. but you have have that easy s escape if you're in the laning phase if there is an Enchantress roaming gank. Yeah. And then now they do pick up the Bounty on which I actually completely overlooked. And Saxa has played this hero yeah. pretty damn well. Yeah. And that's one of those heroes that can just be, you know, a lot of people have been saying it's like an auto win hero. We did see it have struggle a bit in the Empire versus Vega series, but yeah, seeing it come out here is. Pretty surprising that it wasn't uh wasn't banned. This Earth Spirit ban is just very curious. To yeah, me. I, I don't. I, I we were talking about it last game. I don't really get it that much, but clearly, I, I think they just don't want to deal with the, the disrupting potential of a like a five man magnetized boulder smash geomagnetic grip. It's just annoying to play around and very good at if if you get the rolling boulder off in the early game, you're pretty much almost guaranteed to kill in a lot of instances. Or do we not? Are we are we missing something from Dragneel? Do they have like some? Really, like incredibly good Earth Spirit players, something that we I don't do know think about. I do play Earth Spirit. Because that's the look. that's the only thing that I was kind of considering that I wasn't entirely sure about. Well, regardless, I mean, oh yeah, they, they don't want to play up against it. Come on, Ma, you said you were. In a, they picked it all the time. Who, who's casting these? I don't think you were casting. I these wasn't games, casting those games. Sadly. It's a, it does seem like they were KYH, favoring it. Kyh playing the yep. the uh, the or excuse, I almost said Ember Spirit. Earth Spirit. Yeah, I mean. I, I guess if you if you know that there's a good player who has a, a a great hero combination, then I think you just take it away from them, especially if you're digital chaos. And that's what kind of Dragneel have done in this instance. Yeah. They've taken away two of Weeha's heroes, one of theoretically resolutions he played at last game, and now they'll take away an AM as well. Same two bands coming out from DC in the third, fourth, though the Bat Rider and the Puck band. So they're very much so favoring, uh, heavily targeting F HFN in the third, fourth bands. I think that's fine. They they leave the Invoker up, but that means I mean DC can pick it up themselves if they want to do like a either support Marana, which I doubt because they already have the Bounty Hunter, or a safe lane Marana. Um, yeah, Resolution's been playing it actually. Yeah. I think so a lot I, of the time. I think if they want to pick up the Invoker here for Weeha, they can because that is one of his heroes. He played it recently the other day up against Severnova S, and he had a great, great game as a Quas Wex Invoker, which I thought was really interesting. But he mm -hmm. did very well, and he actually got a Hurricane Pike at that point. Wow. Well, the really thing was, cool. they, they, it was a pushing strat. They already had a draw with the uh, with the um, 
the Precision dragon or. and the dragon lance. The dragon lance, and so he got the hurricane pike, and he's just like, I'm gonna hit from way back here. You're gonna hit from way back here, and we're gonna take towers, even though there's a you know a pushback on the tier three and where it actually is now. This is not a pushing strat, though. I don't. Think. How do you feel about the bane first too? I can understand why, because you know, you, versus bounty hunter, you tend to want to draft like these uh, stronger laners, and also it gets it's an easy setup for the enchantress to make movements. I feel like it's a, deni a, a deny pick for for misery to a certain extent, because misery I think plays this very well. He played it well against Evernova S. It's a very high right click damage hero. Brain sap's very strong nightmare for for keeping somebody in place for that gank, for example, to try to stunlock somebody with the enchantress. But first two picking it. Yeah, I, that's the thing. I don't think it would have gotten banned, but yeah. They might um, D DC might have picked it third, maybe is what they're thinking, and they, yeah. they want to grab it in that, that second pick, so they, they deny it. Now the Sand King okay. comes out for Digital Cast, which is very interesting. We saw Evernova has pick, picked this and put it in the safe lane, and it did not work at all. But uh, we'll see if they can run it with a bit better, I guess, play. And then the Faces Void comes out for... That was an instant pick Faces Void right after the Sand King. They're like, we don't care what you're picking third, we're going with Void. So they're, they're trying to play their game at this point, at least by going with that Faces Void in the third pick. Yeah, lockdown, st uh, strong tank, like tanky hero, not the easiest to really get ganked. And that well, uh, well, we might even see it being a safe lane farming void, because that seems like people are kind of changing it up. So this is just, it's just a void right here. We don't really know exactly if it's offlane just yet. However, DC does draft uh, three heroes with invis. So we will. I really hope that we see Dragneel running around with lots of dust and sentries. Yeah. This oh game. my lord, they are going to have to invest so much in that detection, but it's going to be worth it. They really. I. I don't want to see them get caught off guard by any invises because they're already playing versus a bounty hunter. They're playing versus Sand King. They're going to have to be dealing with the Mirana ult on top. So they better have sentries. And just like you were saying, they do pick up the Invoker. I kind of thought that they would uh, like stay away from the Invoker because. Invoker's gotten much weaker throughout the laning phase now, and Bounty Hunter also just already like, picks him apart. Like, yes. Bounty in laning phases, of course, is super I obnoxious. feel like you have to have the Enchantress help him out a little bit. No, I'm not sure if you want to keep the Enchantress, but you can TP in the Bane and help out if there's any if there's ever a gank there. It, it's going to be kind of tough keeping him alive with how Digital Chaos have been executing their ganks prior to this, and in fact, in game number one. So Yeah, and it does look like we, it will be a Mu sanking, so not, not too out of the ordinary, because yes. we do see the Venge and the Bounty Hunter picked up for Misery and... I feel like Mu, Mu has a wildly large hero pool, at least from what I see from when I s see a stream and, and his pub. So. DC, is, I think they're kind of agreeing with what I was saying. they kind of looking at this void, and they're like, oh, this might be a safe lane void. They decide to ban out the, the Dark Darkseer as yeah. well. So that's a really cool approach there by them. And okay. Lone Druid banned out by uh, Dragneel, not yeah. wanting to deal with that timing from the Lone Druid as well as the massive push which comes out of it. Plenty of reserve time for Dragon Slayers. They, they are playing their game at this point with the draft, but they have to figure out something. I, I think in the off lane, as you talked about, the ban came through from the Dark Seer. Maybe they pick up a, a safe laner here. We'll have to wait and see if Mason's going to be the one to play the Faces Void. But as we talked about the HFN Invoker, they're getting some good confident picks here. They're getting some good heroes that they like to play. Um, I'm just curious as to what they're going to go for, though. They've been doing... A lot of, a little, a little bit of everything. Honestly, Slark has been picked up. So, uh oh, that's not good. Anyways, yeah, let's take a look. Uh, take a look at from their previous games from the other days. Let's take a look when they they haven't really picked Bane, so this kind of like throws it off a little bit. But they have drafted, let's say Ursa, Slark, Jug, Life Stealer, even. They have a lot of choices here. I'm just. I, I really want to know if they are going to put this in the safe lane or if they're going to put it in the off lane. They they clearly are taking some time to think about it as well. Yeah. And it also comes down to the DC pick. What are they going to grab as well? Digital Chaos. They've got the Vengeful Spirit. They've got the Sand King. They've got the Bounty Hunter. So they have their two supports: the Venge and the Bounty. They have the Marana, who will probably, as you talked about, be played by Resolution in the safe lane. Sand King in the off lane for Mu. So this leaves the Weeha hero. Alchemist not available for him. Um, maybe something like. An Ember Spirit TA. So was the Slark, Slark. like we okay. were saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's the best bet, because all the other heroes that I was like at least na like listing off. Oh, that's PL mid, potentially. Probably. Yeah, it is. We have yeah, to pick it up. Definitely versus the Invoker. Yeah. So yeah, we were, like we were saying, the Slark was the more the more obvious one, because all the other heroes that were kind of left for Mason, they do get kind of kited around and dealt with pretty well by Vengeful, Bounty Hunter, and do a massive amount of spell damage. I really like the way Misery drafts, though. He makes sure... All right, guys. Our stuns and our chase are covered. In like, look at their thir first four picks. It's like the same thing as last game. They have heavy lockdown, heavy, heavy uh, catch in the, in the uh, early stages of the draft. Yeah, 
I mean, they do have it all covered, and they're they're ready to go essentially now. And if, I feel like what you were talking about is true for the Invoker. He is gonna have probably a rough time. First of all, you have a Bounty Hunter with Soxa. So even if he doesn't get the Courier Snipe, even if he can't find an annoying hero to run around and deal with in the jungle, he can still roam on mid on the Invoker. And on top of that, you have a PL who could just throw out a Spirit Lance every so often and so just be a nuisance with his uh, illusions as well. So right away I was going to ask you, do you think they're going to go for that aggro dual lane again and try to put the Sanking in a 1v1 well, versus Void? And it does look like they are. looks like yeah. they are going to. The, your question has been answered before I can even get to it, so yes. That, that seems to be the case for now. They can maybe do some 5 mid aggression, but I don't think that's actually what's happening. They're going to send Weeha and Misery mid. They're going to get some wards down for him. Uh, Mu is going to go ahead and join him. We'll Very see what scary he does. to go for that top rune for uh, Dragneel because you know you're playing versus the Marana. So I really like this this uh, this play here by DC setting up five heroes for that top rune right now. And they uh, they don't have their faces void for snaking, so he might be able to get that bottom rune, but it might be at the cost of a couple of Dragneel heroes. Mason does not see the shadow walk around the corner from Soxa. Nicely done there to avoid it. The human ward, the human scouting ward, or whatever he is, bounty hunter, will be able to scout things out for him and. Get a little bit of information on the front lines. HFN, unsurprisingly, he has one Sentry Ward in his inventory. He has picked up a Wraith Band for the eventual Aquila pickup that has been so prominent in the past couple of weeks on Invoker. So Yeah, and it looks like this. if they do decide to do this dual-type aggro with the Bounty Hunter roaming between the mid and the top lane, it seems like Dragneel has no idea this is coming because they do actually block. They ward both camps in the bottom lane to stop the experience and yeah. level pulls. That's not a great start if, I mean... I guess you could say Moo can use those to just sandstorm and bring them down, but uh, we'll see. They're going to go ahead and fight at this top rune spot. Zoxa, Magic Missile, Clairvoyance. They've got the arrow. It's going to hit. He's in trouble. He might have to skill Nightmare and go for a deny, but he's been stunned up forever because of that arrow shot, and it's going to be Weeha getting first blood and the bounty rune coming out. Gets a little bit of experience, gets some gold going his way, and he's up to 400 already. And we're not expecting them to be at that top rune spot, and Zoxa did his job beautifully by giving them vision as well as just scouting things out for him. I feel like they... I guess they can't really ex expect it so much for that top rune, but this is going to be make HFN's life so hard because Weeha's going to have a bottle extremely early with that first blood picked up, as well as the poor man's shield, so yeah. harassment's going to be quite uh, futile. Yeah, HFN is going to go for Exhort, so he's got the extra damage. He's going to go probably the standard build, the boots into Drum, Midas at some point in time in between those two. Or we'll wait and see what's going to happen here for HFN. And uh, already Sox is going to be on the hunt. He's popped up the Clarity, maybe looking for the Kuru. You can see the Enchantress has already rotated bottom, or at least towards that bottom, uh, I guess, hard camp. He's going to go ahead and grab it real quick. But here comes the Courier. It's staying on the high ground for now. It's going to probably wait until the Enchantress comes back and maybe... Oh, they're actually going to smoke He's going to break the smoke Yeah, he's going to break the smoke. Soxa is going to be... Well, at least notice, KYH is not going to drop the dust or sentry. He doesn't want to waste the detection. But the first smoke gank of the game has already been broken at 1 minute and 18 seconds by Soxa, unsurprisingly. There's a uh, two-second duration smoke, or so maybe a three-second duration. Yeah, so excellent awareness, though, by Soxa to do that. That's a big deal. How do you feel about this offlane match between Snaking and, and Mu? He, he clearly, he's gotten one point caustic finale, which is going to be nice. But there is still good trade coming up from Snaking as well. It's going to just be a regen war. I think Mu is going to uh, win the regen war, though, with the items that he started with since Snaking opted for a Quelling Blade. But he should be able to do okay. He should still be able to find his farm under the tower yeah. every time it pushes in. Mm -hmm. Arrow coming Arrow. away. Does not catch the creep or the Enchantress. Socks is just being annoying. Let me leash that experience real quick. No problem. Shadow Walk. He's got it ready. Yeah, Sanking definitely wins this one-on-one -on -one matchup, but yeah, like I was saying, it's the you know that he's going to go for Caustic, so the wave is naturally going to push out into you, so Void should be able to get a really good amount of free farm in that lane. And we'll find a bounty too as well, so Snakey will head back bottom with 400 gold. Resolution. Mason goes for the pounce, doesn't quite catch it. They're going to rotate in Sox, though, and another hero. It's going to be uh -oh, Misery Claire. ready to go. Claire's going to be a little too far forward. Sox is going to look for a Shadow Walk hit. He's not going to. He has no Orb of Venom either. Janata finally comes out. Arrow coming through, and it's going to almost hit onto the Hellbear Smash, but KYH is able to avoid it and narrowly walk away. Now putting mid, pressure on mid. Edge of Fen just getting caught with the Spirit Lance and the Illusions going to town. And this is what we were. This is what I was talking about. This is what I was afraid of. Spirit Lance, even at level 2, is going to dish out some massive damage against the Invoker. And he's going to use the Cold Snap himself, and he's got some creeps hitting him. He pops the Invis room, but there's a sentry there. Forge Spirit, HFN, he has to use the Fairy Fire. Weeha still is going to live and almost pick up that kill, but he HF, he's going to force HFN back to at least get his salve and you to use that up. So much pressure coming out from Wee, but he is struggling a bit on the CS, on CS-wise. HFN is doing really well, yeah. I really thought that Wee would be doing a better, a bit better of a job, but I guess, it, I mean, HFN's just, just crushing it with the Aquila and the... Uh, 
Forge Spirit really yeah. helping him out. Now that he's got the Forge Spirit, level two in both Quas and Exhort, he's he's feeling pretty good about himself at the very least. We anytime he goes up to last hit, Weha is taking damage, or even just right click the creep wave. He is taking damage. Regen wise, he's out of it with the exception of filling up his bottle or using his fairy fire. Rotating in is going to be misery. There's no vision here for the dire team, so any any gank is not going to be noticed, whether smoke or not. And Sox is already coming in from the backside. He's got boots, no orb of venom. They're going to go together, and HFN is going deep. He is way far in that way tower. Too deep right he now. is on their enemy hill, and he is probably dead. And we'll see if he can try, try to ring around the rosy this, but I don't think he's going to make it out if the magic missile comes. And he he was literally under the tower when he, he threw that spirit land out, spirit lands out. That's that's way too far up playing versus a bounty hunter. It's just the it, just versus a bounty hunter. But then when the venge is missing, you can't. Snaking? Oh, oh, snaking! He gets bursted by the caustic. What a really stun! Well by caustic. Moo knew. There's no. I think there was a time walk available, but he just couldn't get it off in time. Snake was over half HP. That's a really hard kill to even predict that will happen because of how you don't expect how much damage caustic really does. But Moo stuns perfectly. Pops two creeps instantly. Gets the stun damage on snaking, and then a third creep pops right afterwards and ends up netting the kill. Oh, haste rune for Weeha. He wants KYH, and he's gonna get chased down. They have a nightmare to help him out. They're gonna use it on to Weeha. Teeping away is gonna be misery. They take it off with the illusion. He's got one more spirit lance, and he's gonna actually get juked. He's gonna doppelganger and look for the kill. KYH continues to juke, but he has that haste rune. Pounces up. They get the kill nonetheless. Now Weeha out of the haste rune for a moment here. They dodge the arrow. They won't be able to chase any further. Mason has to go back to farming, and Soxa gets a kill down bottom on Snake King, who gets dove again with another burrow strike. Sand King and Mu having a great time. It's a 5-0 and oh start, 35 last hits. Sure, you might be winning the CS battle otherwise if you are Dragneal, but you're losing heroes left and right fogged. Yeah, really good movements coming out from the supports on the side of DC. Mu putting so much pressure. I thought Snake King would play a bit more defensive because he knows... You know that's what's going to happen versus uh, like a Sand King. You have to watch out for those Caustics every time when you step up. You have to just wait for the Creep Wave to push into you. Now we're looking for a kill set up onto the Resolution Marana. When do you see this, though? Look at HFN. He is farming in the <laughs> in the Radiant Woods on their me medium camp. I mean, you have to get away from that Bounty Hunter any way you can. And that's, that's one way that's to do it, cute. I guess. I don't know if they saw the smoke. Uh, did they see the smoke? I think they did. Uh, they'll pause, though. Dragneal will. KYH as well as Clairvoyance might have been spotted. And oh, gonna yeah. We see the lines being drawn. Yeah, they know something's up. I think uh, Moo's already backing, or he's about to finish up this creep wave and then back. He knows that they have a long way to go. They can't really kill Weeha. He's going to back up under his tower here momentarily, I'm sure. They're going to meet up with HFN. They'll look to have him go back mid instead of joining them for that gank down bottom. Setting up now for top. Yeah, they're going to just go top instead. They're going to have... Mason's only level 5, too. If he gets stunned, he's going to... He can die here. Resolution breaks the smoke. I don't know if he was spotted. They did see him. Arrow's going to come through. He's going to arrow the creep. He's looking for the rune himself. Mason as well as Resolution both in trouble. Nightmare's going to go. I don't know. They have Sun Strike. They're going to get the Sensor Conqueror Stomp as well. Do they have the damage? Brain Sap will it be enough. He's got Leap. He'll get to the high ground on the top lane. Snaking is going to stay, or excuse me, Mason's going to stay alive and just hide behind the wave. But now the Burrow Strike misses. Wave of Terror will go. They have the Shuriken. No track, obviously, for that movement speed. Moo just barely missing with the tip of that Burrow to get the initiation on the Solark. So both kills missed coming out from both sides. Still, DC with the with the more proper move, I guess you could say. They're setting up for at least an objective with their smoke instead of just going for a kill. So they are going to be able to go for top. They just go again. Mason just, he was he's trying to leap back in the up. Trees. He has to leap and he's going to at least stay alive for the time being. And TP's going to be coming in from staking. He's got Chronosphere looking for Misery. Misery should have a stun available. It's not going to use it. They're not really that concerned. Might dive snake, and they're looking for a reinitiation. Here comes Moo for a Burrow Strike. He's going to find it. Epicenter getting channeled. Magic Missile will go, and Snaking has to time walk that damage if he wants to. He decided against it, and he actually misses oh, he out on that time in. walk damage, and he wanted to go in, but he actually goes down to the Caustic Finale and socks his right click, and he's barely alive with 11 HP. Great stun from Moo to get another one. It's going to be two down on the side and of Dragneal, and he's actually going to make it away. Oh Sox with the Bounty Hunter, and they did the Shockwave earlier, wasn't in position. He somehow we makes it out of that. Well, HFN getting caught the Spirit Lance. They need two more right clicks, and he'll get the job done with it. Now a dominating spree. What an awkward turn of events coming out for Dragneal. An awful turn of events, realistically. That's just about as bad as it can get, as now they're already taking down that tier one tower on that top lane. Dear God. Very familiar to the last game. Last game, uh, the fortunate thing for Dragneal was that they had Snaking at least farming a lot in the off lane, but this game, Snaking is not farming at all. He's sitting less than the b enemy bounty hunter. Moo is absolutely free farming. They pressured the hell out of Mason in that safe lane, even taking his tower before the eight minute mark. And Weeha as well. Even though he was doing a little bit uh, a little bit worse in the mid lane than we'd expected, 
uh, on uh, CS wise, he now is completely recovered and he's able to put pressure on HFN constantly. Uh, this is, it's not looking great for Dragneel yet again. And well, they'll use the cold snap on Weeha, but he's gonna get turned right around on HFN, is, is in some trouble. Good nightmare, it's not gonna deny him. A Spirit Lance would get the kill, but he's under the mana for it. Weeha, how far are you willing to die for this? Looks like not that far. He they can't even smartly. kill him though. Sunstrike? Oh my god! Wow, it actually brings him to 9 HP. And Soxa gets does the get the kill on HFN. He throws up the Shuriken. It's level 3. I think it was a track kill as well. I'm pretty sure he used track for that. That's these, huge. These these poor poor souls. I don't think he had the 6 actually at that point. I think he got it from the kill. Okay. Yeah. Weeha though, still. I can't believe How did he live? How did he live? He had like 1 HP, literally. Your oh god. man. Snake King's gonna have to time walk the Star Storm damage, but here comes the track. He wants to go under resolution. There's the Shuriken Toss, Janana proc, and the last right click from resolution will get the job done. Dragneel getting run over. I talked about a complete gain. Sun Strike actually almost gets split, but Soxa takes the brunt of the damage, and even that didn't really do much. So this is looking real bad, because what like you talked about, the Doom at least had farm last game. There's no farm on Dragneel's side. Slark has what? 2k, 2.5k net worth. HFN is. Everybody, the bounty is ahead of everybody on the side of Dragneel. And it's only going to get worse as track continues and they start just taking down towers one by one. Soxa just, even though he, he isn't, I mean, actually he's part of six kills, so I don't know what I'm saying with that, but he's just done so much in this game, even like with that first instance where he breaks the smoke rotation by the Enchantress, he's getting so much information on the map and just being where he needs to be every single time. Yeah. He goes bottom, gets a kill, goes mid, gets a kill, goes top, gets a kill. It's more than just the kills, though, and you're right. Breaking the smokes, being where he needs to be, scouting things out. Clairvoyance is in the smoke. Uh, they really got to dive this move. He's going to get chronoed under the tower, they the but damage? they have. I don't think they really do. So they're going to burrow strike out of the sun strike away, and, and really that's just. That is a Hail Mary play. They GG out? Wow. 10 minutes into the game. Are you kidding me? They GG at 10 minutes, 10 and 0, and they say, we're done with this game. It was bad, but I didn't think it was that bad, man. Dear God. What? I mean, they missed on every single gank. They 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 played okay in the landing phase. They didn't get any farm though. But you GG at 10 minutes into the game. You have a way back in. You can get the invoker and get a Midas. You can maybe get the Slark some farm. I don't know about that. That seems absurd. I can't believe that. I I I'm speechless. I really I really don't know what to say. The that, that's a bit of an early GG, but they just... They I mean, they got crushed, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, I, 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 the game, I guess, kind of... It is, I guess, over in an essence because they just have nothing on the Invoker. He got so shut down. Bane's only level 3, Enchantress level 5. The enemy supports are, like, level 6 already. But, yeah, that's just... I don't know. I'm still kind of at a loss of words, just them actually calling it at 10 minutes. That's, uh... Dragneel, this is a playoff match, a best of three series. That was game two. They needed to win that game to progress through and get to that, that third game. Unfortunately, uh, it wasn't looking meant to be. Even if that game had gone 30 minutes longer, would they have lost? Probably. But they GG out at 10 minutes. They don't even give an effort for the remaining time to actually try to bring it back and, and even it up. So that's actually just, insane to me. You know, they, they play the game right after this, right? They pl no, there's another game. It's the other wonderful. series. It's Shazam versus FDL, oh, and okay. they play the third series of the day. So they have some time to regroup. They probably just want to clear their heads, honestly, because that is that is very scary. Like, yeah, taking a look at the brackets. Yeah, FDL versus Shazam is going to be next up, and that one will probably be a bit closer than this series. The total time of this series, I think, including that 10-minute GG, is roughly about 40 minutes maybe maybe 30 minutes and you could even argue that dc pro kind of like prolonged i guess you could say in the, the other first game, game just yeah. being, being extra safe and but uh, <laughs> what do you say I, what are you it's, talking it's, about it's really like i'm, I'm speechless just because dc kind of played this game also just almost perfectly they recognized what exactly what dragon was going to do they took the exact fights that they wanted. To, they can't even say fights. They took the exact lanes that they wanted to, yeah. and the movement was just perfect. There's the really not much else to the say ganks, about them. The ganks, uh, they worked out for DC, for Dragneel. They did not work out so much, yep. unfortunately. They, they were, there weren't many ganks to even talk about for Dragneel's side. It just kind of slipped past them, I suppose. But yeah. that's an insane game, an insane series, really, from Digital Chaos. It might not look like the most flashy thing in the world for a lot of people, but to me, that was a complete series from Digital Chaos, from front to end, from front to back. That was something that was stellar to watch in terms of, if you like just pure 
Good Dota. If you if you enjoyed Good Dota, that's probably the best series you'll see in a long time from one team over another. You could argue Dragneel maybe not the best team. You know that you can't get the best yep. quality of Dota out of it, but still good stuff from Digital Chaos Bogged. Yep, definitely. Teams are gonna have to keep their eye on the the heroes that DC played and also the way that they moved. I I think their movement in these two games was spectacular. Yeah. So with that, they are now ten and zero here in the Manila Major qualifiers for the American region. They move on to the next round of the playoffs, and we'll await the winner of FDL versus Shazam. We have that matchup next here on Beyond the Summit. Of course, coming after that, we'll have the losers bracket between either FDL and Shazam versus Dragneel, and hopefully Dragneel can bring it back and ha at least have a respectable matchup here yep. in this uh, last best of three of the day. So with that said. I'm Mott. He's Fog. You know where you guys can find us. With that, we'll jump back to the uh, couch in just a minute, and we'll see you guys soon.